Hi, this is Ian Buckley with MakeUseOf.com and today we are revisiting Zode IDE. If you are not familiar with Zode, it is a visual node-based programming IDE allowing you to program your Arduino without typing any code. We have covered this on the Make Use of YouTube channel before and I do suggest you watch that video before this one as I won't be covering every single aspect of the Zode editor. I did that in the last one. But today we will be doing a simple robotics project where you won't need to type a single line of code. Before we get started, let's do the classic Arduino Blink sketch just to check that our Arduino is connected to the computer correctly. If you haven't already got the Zode IDE, head to zode.io and download it. They do have a browser IDE, but uh, as, as it stands at the moment, you can't actually use it to upload to an Arduino board, which won't help us today. So download the IDE, it's available for Windows, it's also available for Mac and for Linux. When you open Zode for the first time, you'll end up in the example project. So uh, where it says hello here, this is part of the Welcome to Zode collection, and uh, there are various things in here that can help you do almost anything. Zode has been heavily updated since the last time we covered it. What we are interested in is uh, Flip Flop. So let's open that up, and uh, this will give us a quick introduction to some of the nodes. So this clock node gives a pulse every one second. Uh, for reference, throughout this video when I talk about the inspector for a node, I'm talking about this area down here in the bottom left, where you can see that every one second it sends a tick. And that tick is a pulse which heads to this flip-flop. Every second this flip-flop toggles, and it toggles its mem, its output, from false to true, true to false, and what we have here is watch, which is a simulation node. Now, if you didn't have an Arduino to hand, Zode allows you to learn how to do visual coding without even needing the hardware. So before we actually use our Arduino, let's just try this. If you click the little game icon down here, it will deploy. And what that happens is it runs the code in C, uh, in C++ on your computer. And as you can see, this is going between true and false. If this was an Arduino pin, you could say it was going between high and low, or one and zero. Anyway, as fun as these simulations are, let's stop that and let's go to an actual program we can use with our Arduino. So, head to 101, upload, and if you look at it, you'll realize that this is exactly the same problem we just si uh, program we just simulated, except it has an actual LED here. Now, uh, you will maybe need to change your port number depending on what Arduino you are using. I'm using an Arduino Uno, and port 13 is where the onboard LED is. So this is ready to go. This is a blink program that will blink every one second from the clock, flip-flop backwards and forwards between true and false. True and false turns our LED on and off. To upload it to the board, head up to deploy and click on upload to Arduino. And uh, here is where you pick your board. Now, there are a massive number of boards to choose from, and they are adding support for new ones all the time. However, today I am using a uh, Uno board from Elegoo, and in my serial port, what do I have? I have, yeah, Arduino LLC. This is the only one it can be, so COM10 it is. So I'm gonna press upload, and down the bottom here, if you unfurl, you can see all of the upload information. Now that that's done, my LED is flashing, hopefully you can see that on the screen right now, which means my Arduino is talking to Zode nicely, so let's make things a little bit more complicated. So this is the circuit we'll be using today, and at first glance it is a little intimidating, but remember there is always fritzing diagrams on the make use of articles that accompany these videos, which should make it a little easier to set up. But in brief, these are all things that you should find in your Arduino starter kit. My Elegoo starter kit had all of these things in. And starting on the right, I have a power supply, which just takes power from the wall and gives me five volts on both of the rails of my breadboard. Incidentally, whenever you do this and you use separate power, make sure to connect the ground pin of your Arduino to the ground line on your breadboard, because you need them to share a common ground for everything to work properly. Just above the power supply, I have a servo, and just below at the bottom of the screen you can see an LCD screen and on the bottom left there is an ultrasonic sensor. Aside from the components you can already see on the board, the only other thing you need are a lot of hookup wires, one 10k potentiometer and one 220 ohm resistor. I won't go through how to set up the LCD screen on this video because there is the fritzing diagram on the make use of article that accompanies this video and I've also set the LCD screen up to be exactly the same setup as the official Arduino tutorial. 
The ultrasonic sensor and the servo both have power and ground pins which have been uh, attached to the power and ground pins of the breadboard and the servo's data line is in pin 10 of the Arduino and the ultrasonic sensor's trigger and echo pins are in pins 7 and 8 of the Arduino respectively. Now I'm using an Elegoo Uno R3 for this project. You can actually use any Arduino for this, just make sure that Zode supports it before you get started. Now that you've got your hardware set up, head back into Zode and open a fresh Zode project. This will give you a nice empty area to work in and we're going to head over to the project browser and look under common hardware. Down near the bottom of the list there are the text LCD screens. We have a 16x2 normal LCD screen so I'm going to drag this out into the plane and drop it. So in order to use this we need to specify all of the pins. Well we did just set this up so you could just look in front of you on the table and copy the pins out or you could use the fritzing diagram once again. As it happens the only pins that Zode need to know about are these data pins in yellow which are 12, 11, 5, 4, 3 and 2. So let's put those in here. 12, 11, 5, 4, 3, and 2. So you could upload this to the Arduino right now, but it wouldn't actually do anything because there's nothing for it to display. This is where L1 and L2 come in. So just for now, let's hard code this. We're going to say hello and then world for the classic hello world. So uh, you can save your project before you keep going and deploy this to your Arduino the same way you did before by heading to deploy, upload to Arduino and pressing upload. And now if you look at your LCD screen, you should hopefully be seeing hello world, hello on the top line and world on the bottom. If you're having trouble seeing your LCD screen, there's a couple of things that you can do. That 10K potentiometer that you set up, that will control the contrast of your LCD screen. And if you're getting just complete garbled nonsense, hit the reset button on your Arduino and that should fix it. Now that our LCD screen is working, let's set up the ultrasonic range sensor. So I'm just going to drag this down to make a little bit of space and look under common hardware again and find where it says H, yeah, here we are, HSRO4 ultrasonic range. So I'm going to drop this here. And as before, down in our inspector, uh, trigger, we know we set up with pin 7 of the Arduino, and echo, we know we set up with pin 8. And that's it. That's all you need to do to get this thing set up. So if you were to upload this now, the Arduino would know there was an ultrasonic sensor there and start taking readings. However, it wouldn't do anything with them. What we would like to do is take one of the lines of this LCD and put the distance there. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to take hello off of this line and I'm just going to stick it down here so we still have our nice hello world. And what we could do at this stage even is just drag this between here and here. So the output of the ultrasonic sensor went into line one of the LCD screen. And if you look here, this now says it is linked, which means that you can't uh, edit it directly. What will be displayed here is what is coming out of the ultrasonic sensor. However, just to make this slightly nicer, we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to get rid of that line by clicking on it and pressing delete. And I'm going to come up to here and look under Zode Core. This gives you a whole load of different kind of uh, uh, operations you can do. Uh, the one we are looking for is concat, which is short for string concatenation. What we're going to do is connect DM here to the second part of the concat, the output of concat to L1, and then in the concat node itself, we can see that input two is linked and we're just going to put in here the word distance, a colon and a space. This means that whatever comes out of here will be distance plus whatever reading we get from the ultrasonic sensor. Once again, save your project and upload it to your Arduino. So now when you move your hand or any other object uh, forward and back from the ultrasonic range sensor, you should get a readout on the top line of your LCD screen of how far the distance is. Now these ultrasonic range sensors can sometimes be a little bit jumpy and jittery, but more or less you should be getting an accurate reading. Setting up the servo takes a few steps. So to start with, you will need a servo node. You find this under zode-dev servo and you want the simple servo node. To set it up, go to the inspector and choose the port. We set it up with pin number 10. Next, we have a fade node. Now, all this does is just smooth out the servo ever so slightly. It isn't going to make it perfect, but it's going to make it just a little bit less jumpy and a little bit less twitchy. So you find this under Zode Core.
This one takes a target input and a rate, and this is how much time it takes in order to do its change. So I set a rate of two. The higher this number, the slower your servo will move, the lower, the faster. Finally, we will want to map the values from our ultrasonic sensor to the servo. The ultrasonic sensor gives out a distance, as you saw before when you tested it with your hand, and that can be anything from 0.03 meters right up to 10 meters, and the servo doesn't know how to make any sense of that. So to use the map clip, first you need to get it, and it is under zode slash math. If you look down the list, you'll find a map clip. And the way that I've set it up is it takes a, a value, which is the value from the ultrasonic sensor, and then we set the values that it comes out of it, the values that we want to use, and then we give it values that we want it to map to. In this case, I want the minimum value that it registers from the ultrasonic sensor to be 0.05 meters. This means that when I'm very, very close, it's going to be mapped to zero on the servo. And the maximum distance I want it to be 0.2. That means that anything 20 centimeters or further away from the ultrasonic sensor will register a one. This gets passed into the fade, which gets passed into the servo, which in short means that when you're close to it, the servo will be in one direction, and the further away you move, the servo will be in the other. Once you've got these three things set up, you can upload it to your Arduino and test out your robot. And here is the finished project working. As you can see, the closer you move your hands to the uh, ultrasonic sensor, the servo moves in one direction, and the further you move it away, it moves in the other. Now, this doesn't look like much of a robot, but all of the bits are there. An ultrasonic sensor for eyes, a servo for moving an arm, let's say, and Zode is capable of much, much more. You can control almost any hardware using the software, and if you are not someone who is into coding, Zode is the answer. And I hope this tutorial helped you get a good start with it. Uh, we do a lot more than just tutorials on this YouTube channel. We do reviews and giveaways, so if you're not already subscribed to us, consider giving us a subscription. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you have a good day.